This video series contains spoilers for, well, everything. Have you ever wondered how all the Hoyoverse games are connected? Why do we have variants of the same character in different games? Or why do so many games share identical concepts? I swear to oh, god, yeah. if I'm ever going to hear the word Samsara again, I'm going to kill someone. Venti? May? Piece of uh, I mean Aro? What are you even doing here? Go home, you have a kid to raise. It's no coincidence that all the Hoyo games have so many things in common, since, well, they all happen in a shared universe, also dubbed the Honkai universe by the CEO of MiHoYo, Kai Haoyu, during the 2021 CDG lecture. It is because our company has a goal in mind, and which is to create the Honkai universe. A fun fact about the name Hoyoverse, which right now is the company's branding for all game-related operations outside of China, is that the name was used by many people in the Honkai community to refer to the shared universe in which all the games take place prior to the rebranding. Also, please note that the company still uses the name MiHoYo in China. Knowing this, it's hard to not think if the new branding was intentional or not, but I digress. You may wonder, what does the fact that they are part of a shared universe mean? Well, to explain it in the simplest way possible, it means that all these games share the same cosmology. Even though the games explore a variety of different worlds and don't always interact, they still share a common cosmology and basic rules that govern them. A while ago I made a three-part video series explaining the cosmology of Honkai Impact 3rd. Those videos are pretty outdated by now, so I wanted to take this opportunity and make an updated version with all the new things that we've learned in the past year and a half. But unlike the last time when I only presented the cosmology from the perspective of Honkai Impact 3rd, this time I will present it from the perspective of all the games that fall under the Hoyoverse umbrella. And yes, that also includes games like Genshin and lesser known games like GGZ. Hmm? What's GGZ you ask? Ok, let's play a quick game. Today on the Theater of Information Game Show, we have Steve, an avid Hoyoverse fan who claims to play all of their games. Yeah, that's me. Steve, please tell us, how many Hoyoverse games are there? Uh, two. And which are those two? Uh, Genshin and Honkai. Which Honkai, Steve? What do you mean? Th there's only one, right? Congratulations, Steve! You're a f***ing normie! The correct answer is 7 if you count all the released games or 8 if you want to include the game that is not released yet. The games are, in order of release, Fly Me to the Moon, Zombie Gal Kawaii, Gun Girls Z or GGZ for short, Honkai Impact 3rd, Tears of Temis, Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail and the currently unreleased Zenless Zone Zero. From this list we will eliminate Zombie Gal Kawaii since it doesn't have much of a story and also Fly Me to the Moon, Tears of Temis and Zenless Zone Zero because although there are some small hints that suggest that they are part of the Honkai universe, the devs never confirm that. So we will focus mostly on GGZ, Honkai Impact 3rd, Genshin and Star Rail. This video series will have 5 parts, each one meant to explore different facets of the Honkai universe. The first part will address the various issues with the translation of the games and the inconsistent use of the terminology. It's important to address them as early as possible because these issues make it almost impossible to obtain solid evidence to connect the games. Unless we use the CN text instead of the English one which can be extremely misleading. But before we begin, I want to thank the entire Hoyostens community for their help with this series, especially when it came to digging up information about GGZ. 
Hoyostance is a community of dedicated Hoyoverse fans who offer an in-depth coverage of their games with a ton of guides and fun trivia. They have the most complete story guide for Honkai Impact 3rd and are constantly adding new information. So please go and check them out. Oh, and uh, speaking of GGZ, I urge you to take any information related to it throughout this series with a huge grain of salt. Since the game is only available in CN and JP, all we know about it is from fan translations. And frankly speaking, only a small portion of the game is actually translated. The information is spread across various media, buried social media posts and lost time limited content, so even the CN fanbase has trouble piecing together the whole thing. In other words, we know jack about it. I felt the need to emphasize this because there are a lot of people with many misconceptions about the game based on incomplete information. It's very important for us to be careful about GGZ because misinterpreting even a single line of dialogue can have huge effects on how the lore is understood. Anyway, let's begin with the most frustrating issue. The translation cluster. The biggest issue when it comes to the translation is the fact that it literally cannot be trusted. And this is something that all the Hoyo games have in common. A lot of the time, when people translate text from Chinese to English, the translators take some liberties to change the original text. Some are intentional and some are made by accident. But regardless of the reasoning, this makes the English translations very unreliable when trying to find common points. This is why for the rest of this video series, I will refer to the Chinese version of the text instead of the English one. Not only is it a lot closer to the original vision of the developers, but you'll also see that it's a lot more consistent throughout the games and makes pointing out certain connections a lot easier. I wanted to add that this is not necessarily because because the translations are bad or that the people behind them didn't do their job properly. Though sometimes that can be the case, but for the most part these kinds of things are normal. The localization teams behind these games work their butts off to bring us these stories in English and they deserve all the praise and appreciation. It's just that the Honkai series spans over multiple games with different translation teams that lack a lot of information and are behind a tight schedule. So sometimes the liberties that they take with their translations can cause inconsistencies with the CN text or other games. Now that we've established that the English translation is pretty unreliable, it's time to talk about the other big issue. The misleading nature of how the games try to present information. While this issue can be an aftermath of unreliable translation, in most cases, Hoyo's explanation of their own cosmology is inconsistent by design. This is due to many reasons. Hoyoverse uses a narrative technique called an unreliable narrator. Those of you who played Honkai Impact 3rd and Genshin should be a bit more familiar with it. How many times have you seen characters reveal something important about the lore just so that it turns out later that what they said was false? Or some other character appears out of nowhere with a totally different interpretation of the same thing? This happens because Hoyoverse tells these stories through the limited perspective of these characters. Many times important information is presented just as a theory or as a vague description from the perspective of one character. But that character doesn't have the full picture either, and that's when inconsistencies between different explanations occur. A good example would be Ado's discourse about the Honkai, Imaginary Tree and the Sea of Quanta in Chapter 17 of Honkai Impact 3rd. Initially, Ado proposes the idea that the Honkai is some sort of test slash filter mechanism of the Imaginary Tree. And for a while, this became the accepted understanding of the Honkai in the community. But later, Part 1 finally came out and Dr. May revealed that Honkai is controlled by an entity called the the cocoon of finality, which is a higher dimensional being formed by the merging of multiple civilizations. Soon after part 1 of Honkai Impact 3rd ended, the ending of the reborn storyline in GGZ reinforced Dr. May's theory about the Honkai, adding even more context to these beings that control it, but I'll talk more about that when we get to explore GGZ in depth later into the series. 
and this unreliable narrator isn't always necessarily a character. Let's look at another example, this time from Genshin Impact. One of the ways Genshin likes to reveal its lore is through the texts and the books that the players can find in the open world, and these books can have quite an impact. I'm looking at you before sun and moon, but besides that, there are various other books that reveal information about characters and events. One of those characters is the Geo Archon himself, aka Broke Daddy Zhang Li. In the early days of Genshin, books like Rex Incognito talked about the life of the Geo Archon and how they would journey in the mortal realm by shape-shifting into various forms. Many people took that book as fact, but during an event that came out later, Zhang Li himself confirms that the materials of the books are false and that all the things that we thought we knew about his past were in fact just fabricated lies. Because of that, it's important to remember that any character character can be wrong and that everything can be changed down the line if Hoyo desires to do so. Another example, but this time between two different games, is how the imaginary tree is presented in Star Rail and Honkai Impact 3rd. In Star Rail, the data bank presents the concept of the imaginary tree as a theory proposed by Zendar, the first member of the Genius Society. Having the imaginary tree as a theory in Star Rail makes a lot of sense, since from the perspective of the majority of the people, the concept is very elusive and not very well understood. Meanwhile, in Honkai Impact 3rd, the imaginary tree is a much more tangible concept, since we have characters like Aro who was able to manipulate the wedge of the world and create a new timeline. But even so, the concept is still very elusive even in Honkai Impact 3rd. Don't get the wrong impression that Aro knew everything, he just knew enough to make his plan work. And, as a final disclaimer before we get into the terminology, keep in mind that explaining the entire cosmology of a 10 year old game series is nigh impossible. There will always be something missing, something that doesn't make sense or something that we can't explain. Now, before we get to talk about the terminology, I want to apologize in advance because I'm going to try to pronounce some of these words in Chinese and only God knows how much I'm gonna butcher them. First, we have the word Yu Chao, which means universe or outer space. In the context of the Honkai games, this word is often used to encapsulate the entirety of the imaginary tree. Every leaf, world, star system or planet is a three-dimensional space that is contained in a 11th dimensional structure that Hoyo calls universe. That is because Hoyoverse uses Evert and the Wit's many words interpretation scheme for their universe. But since in this part I want to focus solely on the terminology, I will talk more about the many words interpretation and how Hoyoverse adapts it to their games in a future video. So do not worry. Duo Yu Chao means many universes or multiverse. Throughout the entirety of the Honkai series, this word was used only once in IX's databank entry. This is a very tricky word because we don't have any context behind it. It may refer to different words on the imaginary tree or to multiple imaginary tree-like structures. We just do not know. A similar word, Dan Chao Yu Chao, was used by Shakespeare during the Durandal visual novel in reference to one of the characters' explanations of the Sea of Quanta. It's hard to tell exactly why Shakespeare used that word. There could be a few different reasons, since the theory about the imaginary tree wasn't established at that time, and it's possible that Shakespeare used that word to simplify her explanation and make it easier for the people around her to understand. Yin He is translated as galaxy, usually with capital G, and it's literally the Chinese term for the Milky Way. It is mostly used in GGZ and Star Rail, and is typically synonymous with universe. When taken literally, it means silver river, so it can be taken as a visual description portraying the vastness of the universe. It's important not to confuse this term with Xian Xie, which is used to refer to actual galaxies, star clusters or star systems. 
systems. The use of their terminology in this case is not 100% accurate, since a star cluster is technically bigger than a single star system, but we can let that slide. The confusing part here is that Yin He and Xian Xie are homonyms in English, which means that they are spelled the same but have different meanings. And as you might have guessed, this makes the translation even more confusing. During Himeko's explanation of the imaginary tree, she states that the imaginary tree was proposed as a structure for the galaxy using the word yin he, which is seemingly interchangeable with universe. Because of that, many people who see the word galaxy in English think that Himeko is referring to only one galaxy or star system, but she is actually referring to the entire universe. As I said, the actual word for normal galaxies or star system is Xian Xie. It's a cluster I know, but it's important to point these things out so that you'll get a general idea of why this whole thing is a mess. And also why making claims on how the cosmology works without properly looking at the Chinese text can be misleading at best and almost impossible at worst. Something similar happened in the alien space manga on the last page when they teased Welt's adventure through the universe. A new journey, one that will extend across galaxies. Again, they translated the word as galaxy, but they use yin he, not xian xie, so it actually refers to the entire universe and not just a single star system. The most important term that everybody should remember is ding yue, which means subscribe. As in subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like this type of content and you want to see more. No, but seriously, this video series took a lot of work, so if you want to support it by subscribing and giving it a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. The next one is the trickiest and most flexible term. Xie Jie means world, and when I say that it's flexible in its use, I mean this is some kind of Luffy level term with how much Hoyoverse likes to stretch it. The word is used to describe a lot of different things, but in the context of the cosmology typically refers to an isolated structure of space-time. A leaf on the imaginary tree, which is merely just a metaphor that is used very inconsistently by different characters, since everyone has their own interpretation of how the mechanics of the imaginary tree work, can be a word. Different planets are also referred to as worlds, and even even large spaceships that contain entire ecosystems like the Luofu are also referred to as worlds. This can cause a lot of confusion, so it's important to use context clues to distinguish the exact meaning at a given time. The use of the term is complicated even further when in some of Himeko's descriptions and a couple of other places, star systems or xian xie is used instead of words, further adding to the fact that the scale of this word's usage can be extremely vast. Knowing how the terminology is used in Chinese compared to English makes reading the text a lot easier. Here is an example. This is the entry about the nameless from the databank of Star Rail. Alongside, we We'll also look at the CN text for comparison. The text claims that Akivili used to traverse across worlds, which is consistent with the translation we know, and uses the word Xiejie referring to any three-dimensional structure in space. It can be a planet, a ship, or an entire world encapsulating many star systems and galaxies. The next part is laying down the star rail that linked worlds together in the sea of stars. The most important word here is Shinhai, which is often used in all the Hoyoverse games from GGZ to Genshin and Star Rail. Unfortunately, it's not consistently translated into English, having multiple variations such as Starry Ocean, Ocean of Stars, and even the completely incorrect Galaxies of Stars. It's a word seemingly used to refer to the navigable universe. The brave and curious were attracted by the tales of these adventures and followed the steps of the trailblaze, joining the god on their journeys to explore the galaxy. 
Here again we have the use of the word Yinhe which is translated as galaxy or Milky Way and is used to refer to the entire Honkai universe. Because of this we can assume that the Express traveled through different leaves of the imaginary tree and not just in a single world or star system. If that was the case they would have used the word Shinshi or Shijie instead but they use Yinhe which is used to refer to the entire universe in multiple games. Using this method and comparing the CN and English text can provide you with a much easier understanding of the cosmology. I will also leave a link to the Hoyo decks where you can find a list of the most important terminologies used in the Hoyoverse games. This method can also be used to check for translation errors in the text. Here is an example of a pretty big translation error that changes how we perceive the cosmology in Star Rail. In Himeko's dialogue about the galaxy, she talks about Xander's theory about the imaginary tree and says that each leaves are separate universes. Well, if you look at the Chinese text, we see that she uses the word Xinxie, which means star system or galaxy, and not Yu Chou or Yin He, which refer to the universe. The English localization completely mistranslated the text here, giving people the idea that each leaf is a separate universe, when in fact she says that each leaf is a separate world. As tempting as it is to look at the leaves on the imaginary tree as separate universes and call the imaginary tree a multiverse, this can lead to a lot of semantic miscommunication by having two people talk about the same thing while using completely different terminology and not understanding each other. Yes, as a structure it functions like a multiverse, but it's not really one and it's best to call it a universe since that's how Hoyo calls it. So, to avoid complicating things, it's best to stick with Hoyo's use of terminology in CN. That's also why I don't like to call the imaginary tree a multiverse. The devs made it very clear that the Honkai universe is a universe with multiple worlds. A lot of popular media franchises, like Marvel, change Everett's proposal of the many words interpretation and popularize the concept of multiverse of universes because the concept of a universe of words was seemingly too difficult to comprehend. Mihoyo's take respects the original meta theory in Everett's interpretation. And again, don't worry if you're still confused. I'm going to explain this concept in greater detail when we get to talk more about the structure of the universe. Until now, I've only pointed things out from Star Rail. But if we add Honkai Impact 3rd to the mix, things get even more complicated. Compared to Star Rail, Honkai Impact 3rd's English localization makes things even worse. Yet, yeah, trust me, it's possible. The main culprit is the word Shije or world, which Honkai Impact 3rd translates as both world and universe. Well, Star Rail and Genshin translate it as word for the most part, but there are moments when Star Rail makes the same mistake. I'm looking at you Chavez. This contributes even more to the general confusion because when they say world in Star Rail and Genshin, they refer to the same thing as when they say universe in Honkai Impact 3rd. And when they say universe in Star Rail, it can mean something entirely different from what they mean in Honkai Impact 3rd. And this mistranslation is consistent in other terms as well. For example, you have things like Shijie Pao, which literally translates to bubble world, but it's translated in English. English as bubble universe. Same as Banzeng Shijie, which means natural world and is used to describe the proper worlds on the imaginary tree, but it's translated as proper universe in the game. While the English translation of Honkai Impactor directly conflicts with Star Rail and Genshin, the Chinese usage of the terminology is mostly consistent in all the Hoyoverse games. This dichotomy between English and Chinese perpetuated in the global community the false impression that the Hoyoverse games happen in different universes when in fact they just explore different worlds in the same universe. And Star Rail doesn't even happen in a single world, but the Express is journeying throughout many. This is further evident in the Alien Space manga when Welt and Void Archive talk about the different branches of the imaginary tree. In typical Honkai Impact Earth fashion, the word Shijie, which is used in Star Rail and Genshin to refer to words, is incorrectly translated as universe, giving people the false impression that Welt and Void archives go to another universe, when in fact the Chinese text tells us that they go to another world. 
another thing related to Honka Impactor's translation that I wanted to address is Einstein's explanation of the sea of quanta from chapter 10. This moment is very important because it's the only time that Hoyovers used the word Yucho, which means universe, to refer to different words. Assume the universe as a glass of water surrounded by an infinite number of other glasses of water. Overflowing water will flow along the glass walls to form a puddle in the middle of the table. This puddle does not belong to any glass, but the water of the puddle may be from any glass. People of the previous era found this puddle dimension between parallel universes. This puddle was named as the Sea of Quanta. Now, before you are like, aha, got you, homo, I know that you had no idea what you're talking about. Let me address the elephant in the sea of quanta. The words used by Einstein here are most peculiar because this is the only instance that we know of in the entire Honkai series when they use Yu Chong instead of Xi Jie. And it's just for this chapter only. In the next chapter, characters start using the proper term for world, Xi Jie, like nothing ever happened and Einstein's previous explanation didn't exist. This peculiar choice of words from Einstein could have happened for a couple of reasons. The most likely reason is that the people that worked on the story were not all on the same page and this was just a writing error. This speculation seems even more probable when we see that at the same time Einstein explained the concept of the sea of quanta, the image that was shown to demonstrate her glasses full of water analogy has the word word in the position of each glass. And like I said, after this moment, the characters started to consistently use the term world instead. Another reason could be that Einstein is simply uninformed. It's important to note that at that moment in time, Einstein admits herself that her understanding of the sea of quanta is lacking. So she simply tried to explain the concept in layman terms for Bronia and the rest to understand. But regardless of the reason, the Chinese texts move on to consistently use words from then on, while the English localization kept butchering the term and constantly interchange it with universe, creating a confusing mess. So, is your brain still in one piece? You are right? I know that this is a lot of information and that some of you may still have questions. But rest assured that I will cover everything important during this video series. There are a lot more instances of unreliable translations that make the process of connecting the games even harder, but I only wanted to point out the biggest offenders so that you can have a general understanding of how big the issue is. I think that the most important lesson that you can take from this video is don't rely on the English text alone to figure out the cosmology.